Hi guys, my name is Avnika Sane and I'm a final year MBBS student at BJGMC Pune. Today, Jignasya is here with yet another video on a topic that most medical undergraduates interested in doing research are looking for, and that is information on the ICMR STS program. Now, before we begin, I'd like to give a disclaimer. This video is purely for the benefit of medical or dental undergraduates in India and we are in no way a voice for the Indian Council of Medical Research. However, most of the information given in the upcoming slides has been taken off of their official website itself. You can always visit it for more details. Link will be provided in the description box below. So let's jump into it. The ICMR STS program stands for the Indian Council of Medical Research's Short-Term Studentship Program. ICMR initiated the STS in 1979 in order to promote interest and aptitude for research among medical undergraduates. And for the last couple of years, they have extended it to dental UGs as well. Their primary objective is to provide an opportunity for the medical undergraduates to familiarize themselves with research methodology and techniques. So what is their purpose behind it? They wish to provide a platform for the medical UGs to take this up and thus provide an incentive to take up research as a career option and contribute to the healthcare of the nation in the future. And next, what are the advantages to the student? Well, there are plenty. Firstly, as I said earlier, it helps you become a better doctor and practice evidence-based medicine. Secondly, it can be quite useful for your PG programs in India wherein the MD thesis is a compulsory activity and having done research in your undergraduate days definitely provides you a research-oriented perspective and an upper hand as compared to your peers. Thirdly, ICMR provides a grant of Rs 20,000 if the report gets accepted, which is not a small amount. And lastly, it looks great on your CV if you plan to apply to foreign universities for post-graduation. One thing I'd like you guys to note here is that the costs of the research must be borne by the medical or dental college where the research is being conducted. This means that the grant that you receive from ICMR is more like a token of appreciation rather than a funding per se for your research. I will come to the implications of this in just a bit. So now, let us move on to the eligibility criteria. This program is only for the MBBS or BDS students studying in medical or dental colleges before they appear for their final year exams. What does this imply? It means that interns, PG students, students of paramedical or non-medical courses are not allowed to apply. So let me give you an example. If you are an MBBS or BDS student who is going to take their final year exams in December 2020, you cannot apply for STS in Jan 2021. However, you can apply any time before that. Now your guide has to be a permanent faculty member of the college where you study. Again, what does this mean? This means that visiting faculty, part-time faculty or residents are not allowed to be guides. Some very important things to note here are that firstly, only one student will be allowed to work under one guide. And two students are not allowed to work on one topic together. Hence, the dictum is one student, one topic, one guide. A student can have co-guides, for example, if the topic is knowledge of antimicrobial resistance among surgeons then the student can choose his main guide to be a pharmacology professor and a co-guide as a surgery professor. However, ICMR will recognize only one main guide for all practical purposes. In case duplicate names of students or guides are found, any and all such applications will be automatically rejected. Hence, please keep this in mind when you choose your guide and your topic. Okay, so next up is the timeline of STS. I know this can look really intimidating, so let me walk you through it. We will begin from the left. As you can see, online registrations are to be done between approximately 10th December and 10th Jan, although these dates may vary a bit. After that is the online STS proposal submission and application form submission, which is open for about 2 to 3 weeks, so usually from 10th Jan to 25th or 27th Jan. More details on these forms will be provided in just a bit. Also, please note that these dates keep fluctuating, so I would advise everyone to visit the website for dates applicable to that particular year. Now, these applications are evaluated by ICMR and perhaps based on a scoring system, the applications are ranked and every year a certain number of proposals get selected. Again, the numbers can vary. 
the list of the selected applicants is usually released on their website in the month of April. Now, before I move forward, the ethics committee approval, which is crucial before beginning any type of research, should ideally be obtained any time between Jan and April. But ethics approvals dated beyond 31st August of that year will not be approved. We have a separate video lecture coming up on the basics of ethics, so please stay tuned. Now, once you know that your proposal has been accepted, you are now expected to conduct the research any time between April and September and prepare a detailed report. The completed STS report is then to be uploaded online any time between August and October. The reports are again evaluated by ICMR between October and January and in Feb of that year, the results are finally declared. This is followed by the dispatch of the stipend and certificate in June and October respectively only for the reports that have been approved for, by ICMR. One tip I'd like to give you guys is to not choose a topic that requires a lot of monetary funding or resources so that just in case your proposal does not get accepted at this step, you can always go ahead and conduct your research comfortably. Just a couple of more things before we move ahead. The timeline for 2019-2020 specifically has been revised and the dates have been pushed forward by two months in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, if you are a student whose STS proposal was accepted in June 2020, then the research and the report preparation can be done any time until November 2020. The completed STS report can be submitted online any time until 31st December 2020 compared to the previous years when it was to be done usually on 15th October or the 30th of October. The timeline for STS proposal submission for 2021 is not out yet, so please keep checking the website for regular updates. Now, on to application submission. Submission of the STS application or proposal is a two-step process. Step 1 is registration of the student details, that is, part A of the online form. And step B is submission of the application or the proposal with several other details, that is part B, C and D of the online form. The forms shown in the upcoming slides have all been taken from right here. So I won't be going into the details of every aspect of form A, but I will simply highlight some important points. The registration form is divided into three sections. First is the login details, that is the student's active email ID and phone number. Second are the course details, that is the student's name, course, college name and address. And third are the personal details, that is the student's date of birth and residential address. Here, it's better to keep the corresponding address as your college because they usually know much better than us regarding any details that need to be provided. Kindly note that the guide's details, title of the proposal and other details are not required at the time of registration. So you can always fill in part A of the online form any time between 10th December and 10th January even before you have finalized your guide, your title of the proposal, etc. Once you click the submit button, a password and a reference ID will be generated automatically and sent to the registered email address. So please make sure that you always put in the right email ID and never ever lose your reference ID because this will be required for f all future communications with ICMR. Now once you're done with that, you need to finalize your guide and you need to write your STS proposal. And details on how to do that have been covered in separate video lectures on our YouTube channel. Once you're done with that, you can now finally move to step 2. Part B includes complete details of the guide, that is name, designation, department, medical or dental college, and contact details including current email address are to be provided. Part C. Next up are the various attachments or enclosures, that is, the application attestation form, the ethics committee approval, the case informed consent form, case study form, and study questionnaire. So now I shall explain each of these. First is the application attestation form. This is what the application attestation form looks like. It is crucial during application submission and your proposal will not get accepted without it. So please make sure that it is properly printed, filled with all the appropriate signatures of your guide, HOD, Dean, and then scanned and re-uploaded. All the other enclosures here are optional. If you wish to continue your research irrespective of whether ICMR is going to approve it or not and thus have already finished with your ethics approval, you could go ahead and upload the PDF. Even if you haven't, that's okay, you can always do it later. For an informed consent form, your guide can help you obtain that. 
It's basically required for studies where you need to take permission from your participants before you use their data. A case study form might be needed in a study on, let's say, ocular manifestations in TB, wherein you would then need to record the complete history and ocular examination of the patient. A study questionnaire might be required, for example, in a study assessing prevalence of anxiety disorders among adolescents. However, all these documents are optional, only the application attestation form is compulsory at the time of proposal submission. Part D. This is where you upload your STS proposal. The options under Type of Study and Subject Area are provided on the website, so kindly refer to it to, for more details. The rest of the items here are quite self-explanatory. As you can see, procuring your guide's details and filling up the application attestation form, which requires quite a few signatures by the way, is going to take time, so please make sure you do this prior to the deadline. Also, please note that Step 2 can be completed only after finishing Step 1, that is between 10th Jan and 25th or 27th Jan. Also, you do not need to conduct your research before submitting your proposal to ICMR. You simply need to inform them that you wish to conduct this research project and that this is your plan of action. Do not, I repeat, do not wait for the last day guys to submit your application. This is very important because ICMR never extends its deadline. The website often gets clogged on the last day and you do not want to miss the deadline for any stupid reason. As you can see, part A of the online form can be filled in the comfort of your home, but part B, C and D are going to require time. So I would highly recommend you guys to go back and have a look at the sample forms thoroughly beforehand so that on the day of the submission, filling up these forms will not take too long. Along with your proposal, try to get these things done too simultaneously so that you're through. Any details once submitted cannot be edited, so make sure that you recheck your form thoroughly. After you finally submit your application, ICMR takes about 2 to 2.5 months to declare the results. In the meanwhile, you could complete your ethics work. After acceptance of the proposal, you need to do your actual research, write the report and submit it by October of that year. Details on report writing and report submission will be covered in a separate video lecture on our YouTube channel. Now, upon acceptance of the report, you receive the stipend and certificate of merit within six to eight months after that, as discussed earlier. This is another question we get all the time, so I thought I would address it. ICMR SDS is not the only way to do research, rather ICMR only provides an incentive to do it. If your proposal does not get accepted, please do not be disheartened. This does not make your research worthless or even insignificant. You can always continue your research and end up having similar opportunities in terms of publications and competitions as compared to your peers who did complete their SDS. What truly matters is your dedication and perseverance. I believe that there are several other research organizations in India which do provide funding and information on this will be provided on one of our social media accounts very soon. If you still desperately wish to do the STS, you can always reapply next year with either the same project or with a different project. This is also an option just in case you end up missing the deadline for the previous year. But mind you, it will not be given any special preference and will always be treated as a fresh or new application. So after this long monologue, I'd like to summarize before I end. In this video, I have covered the background of the ICMR STS program, its objectives and advantages. Next, we had a look at the eligibility criteria and the timeline for the ICMR STS program. Then I explained the entire application submission process and lastly, some ideas on what to do if the proposal is not accepted. I would truly recommend you guys to go back and have a look at the entire ICMR STS website and especially their FAQs because they do provide a lot of useful information. In case of any doubts, please feel free to contact us via the comment section or email and we will be happy to answer your doubts. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe. We have new videos coming up every Monday, so please stay tuned. Bye!